In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Illumine our hearts, O Master, who lovest mankind with the pure light of thy divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our mind to the understanding of thy gospel teachings. Implant in us also the fear of thy blessed commandments, that trampling down all carnal desires, we may enter upon a spiritual manner of living, both thinking and doing such things as are well pleasing unto thee. For thou art the illumination of our souls and bodies, O Christ our God, and unto thee we shall have glory, together with thine unoriginate Father, and thine all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever, and to ages of ages. Amen. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. We've been on and off this um, this past uh, month, just because of whatever other events happening and uh, um, in other church services have uh, been taking place. Um, uh, God willing, uh, tonight that we continue with the last chapter of the Epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Uh, just uh, housekeeping items. Next week, we won't have a Bible study. It just, it's just because uh, Thanksgiving, unless you really want to insist to have something that we can. But I'm sure most most of you, if not all of you, are uh, busy, you know, eating a turkey and whatever comes with the turkey or whatever meat you're going to eat on that day, right? So just an FYI, I think. After... We're probably at the end of the of the of the session today. The meeting, we probably we can talk and see what we want to go after. We continue. We stop during uh, December, or um, let's let's talk see what kind of options we have, or we just keep keep continuing whenever we can. Um, we'll just uh, in anyway. Um, but like I said, today we're going to finish, God willing, the epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians, which we are in its last chapter, chapter 6. Um, as we know, as we know in general from the epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians, it's like has like this two main parts. This one part kind of like to know more, to really understand who God is. And uh, really understand what what the Christian faith is really about, especially that you have in Ephesus, in Galatia, in Corinth, all of these uh, uh, places that Saint Paul had to write uh, letters to the Christians who lived there. That you had a lot of Jews who became Christians, but they still they kept their Jewish uh, tradition and their Jewish law and their Jewish practices, which affected how to live really a good Christian life. Um, and St. Paul writes this letter, especially to them, these letters, especially to them, to inform them um, and, and point out um, uh, like the flaws and what they need to change and how to and what Christianity is really about. So that's the first part, at least in the in the part of the uh, in the Epistle of Saint Paul to the Ephesians. And the second part, as we started, uh, 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 as we saw last time when we did Chapter Five, uh, and we're going to see it also in this chapter, Chapter Six, is how do we behave with each other? And last week we covered Chapter Five, which um, talks about husbands and wife, right? And, you know, for the husband is the head of the woman, as Christ is the head of the church, but also the women to, uh, you know, to obey their husbands, but for the man to die for his wife. So all of these that we said, uh, um, uh, all of these relation ways of dealing with each other, um, which nowadays we might think is like, well, it's obvious, or of course that should be done, but we always we cannot forget the um, the time Saint Paul is talking uh, this, where women are considered like unfortunately as of like a a piece of uh, uh, I don't know um, uh, furniture like you can replace it whenever and not much uh, not full rights not equal rights or any of this, so Saint Paul talks about that, talks about our relationship with our spouses. And then as we're going to see in chapter six, he talks about what? He talks about our relationship with parents and children, um, how the parents ought to live and how uh, or uh, ought to deal with their, uh, the parents, ought, how, how the parents ought to deal with their children and vice versa, how the children should be dealing with their parents. And also the, uh, the second part, uh, we will see how 
actually slaves with their masters uh, should should uh, um, act, should behave with each other. And of course, how the slave should act, behave, and how the masters should behave. Again, keeping in mind the mentality of the society and the practice of the society back then, 2000 years, uh, you know, 2000 years ago. Uh, and of course, and the second, so at least that's in general uh, about the epistle of uh, St. Paul to the Ephesians. In this chapter, in chapter six, we will see basically those, there are two major parts of this chapter. So the first part, um, uh, the first part is uh, uh, basically still talking uh, about the relationship of the, the people among each other, you know, with each other. And in this case, like today, we're going to talk is about uh, parents and children and slaves and their masters or, you know, children and their parents and masters and their uh, children. And then the next part, this uh, the, the, the second part, that we're going to uh, uh, see is basically how to, as individuals, what kind of he uses the uh, imagery of a, of a soldier, of a Roman soldier putting an armor, um, uh, an armor, uh, you know, for the, uh, the like, I think that's what it's what it's called, the the armor, like when they go to fight, that like basically, uh, um, uh, so they can, if they get, so they don't get killed easily. Um, uh, and he calls it that. What can? What should we do to make sure we have the armor of God? Dara Allah, uh, basically um, in Arabic. Shun yikun anna. What we can have? Uh, what we need to do so we have that protective, um, uh, 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 like a, a vest to help us, like a, a bulletproof. Basically, nowadays we can say the bulletproof of uh, you know of God. Um, uh, so that's what we see in the second part. There's a short third part. It's a small, it's like basically the ending of the epistle, but mainly we're going to focus on those two parts that we said, the relationship of, um, the relationship of, ma uh, of parents and kids, how it should be done and the relationship of slaves and, uh, um, slaves and their masters. But actually it's uh, not just like also slaves and, uh, slaves and, uh, um, and masters is more of like employee and masters um employee like people that you work for so your employer and you know employees um okay any questions till now we saw like a, a Actually, little hi little Abuna, i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt the lecture no 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 not a problem okay. thank you thank you Just Allah saying, for a second i was like oh my gosh it's a different background wow they upgraded yeah. from the from the bathroom curtain. Um, I know, right? <laughs> this yeah. this one is better. Thank you, Abuna. Allah khali. Sorry, okay. guys. No, no, not a problem. Not a problem. Hey, any questions? Any comments? Any complaints? There's no complaints here, but like we have to say. Okay, so that's the you know uh, that's basically uh, the base idea of the epistle of uh, Saint Paul to the Ephesians. Okay, so who would like to read Deacon Nicole? I think you already asked that question, right? Yes, Tina is going to read. And you please uh, read from the beginning uh, till, so from verse 1 till verse 9, please. Okay, sure. Chapter 6, 1 to 9, if you don't mind. No problem. Okay, children and parents. Yes. Children, obey your ch your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. S slaves and masters, bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling. And sincerity of heart as to Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with goodwill doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. And you masters do the same things to them, giving up threatening, knowing that your own masters also is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so as we saw, there are two, you know, two ideas here of relationship or two uh, points of relationship, one between, as we said before, between the parents and children, and the other one is between the slaves and master. But it's actually, um, uh, you know, uh, but it's actually between like employer and employee relationship when you have a boss. How do you deal with your boss and how the boss should deal with you know, with the employees, right? We all, you know, worked in places and we all, we might say at least in, it's actually in both, in both, uh, 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 in both points, the children and parents or the slaves and masters, like, you know, we might say about our parents that they were so strict, they were, they would beat me up or they're like, oh no, they're just like so chill. I ne you know, never ever got, you know, um, uh, you know, beat up or any kind of reprimanded, maybe here and there, they yell at me, yell, they yelled at me, or, you know, and then with the uh, slaves and masters, probably we all had had some kind of a, a good boss who respected us and, you know, and worked with us very nicely. And we felt like as if it's our own business, but also on the other hand, we probably worked, uh, there's a chance that we probably worked with some bosses uh, um, uh, uh, that um, actually they're awful to work with, you know, that it was you know big time uh um you know just it's a torture it's a torture that you could not wait till you leave this job okay so let's uh, do the first part it's uh, the first four verses chapter uh, verse one to, uh, to verse four the parents and children okay so according to the culture uh norm right back then uh two thousand years ago fathers are responsible for what even till today will kind of we kind of, uh, we still have some kind of, you know, like this. Usually fathers are, you know, responsible of the discipline, right? Uh, the, you know, the wait till your father comes home, right? I don't know how many times you've probably heard it. I've heard it many, 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 many times growing up. Wait till your father comes home and you'll see, right? A lot of times, especially, you know, boys or anyway, just like they, I was like, okay, I can, you know, say no to mom or like be, a, you know, be a bad boy with my mother, but then, you uh, you know, it's like my but my father. Well, I can't do it, and he'll beat me. Like has no, um, he might not have any remorse or mercy for me, right? So, anyway, even from the old, that uh, according to the culture norms, fathers are responsible for discipline, right? And children are to obey their parents, right? It's like to obey, to obey. I mean, to the point you don't think you can't even think, right? Like. Here's who you're going to get married. Who's what you're going to do. Here's what you, you know what I mean? Like this is, I mean, we still even have some cultures like this even here, right? Even till now, like you'd better, here are your maybe two options or like two, you know, people to, to choose from, you know, to marry for, or, you know, or back then, even by your, you're probably nine years old or 10 year old, a boy or a girl. And like, yeah, yeah. It would just, once they get older, you know, he's going to be married, you know, we've already made the uh, kind of the agreement with that family, you know, that you're going to, you know, uh, we're going to marry our our son to their daughter or our daughter to the son, right? So that's how, that's how, you know, and children will say, okay, yes, that's, that's my wife, that's my husband, right? By the way, hi, Jamil, Ahlen. good to see you. I don't know if Jamil can hear us, or I'm not like, what if I'm frozen? Am I frozen? No, uh, you're not frozen. You're fine. Uh, maybe he has some issues. Jamal? I don't think he knows you're talking to him. Yeah, he was saying hi. Abuna said hi to you. Oh, yes. <laughs> hi, guys. Hi. Sorry for I'm late. No problem. Sorry. Never late. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. Okay. So, but what is he urging them in those uh, children? Obey your parents, but in what way? So, I mean, again, look how he we have to take in consideration the society, the time, the culture that this all written. This is all like, um, this is all new. This is like somebody writing something that, that even like thought about, not even like came to mind. Uh, so obey your parents, but in what? In the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, right? What is this from? What is this from? from what? Honor your father and mother. 
from Ten Commandments book. number four. Right. That's the fifth commandment: Honor your mother and father all the days right. of their life, and you will live long and prosper. Mm -hmm. It almost sounded like Star Trek, didn't it? I hate to say that. <laughs> Maybe it was. I don't know. You never know, right? Which is the and first no, but yeah. one with the promise. Oh, yeah. What is it? What is it, Deacon? It's it's the only commandment with a with a promise. Right. You have yes. a long life. That's right. It. Yes. Yes. That it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. And you, Father, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Of the Lord. So children are to obey their parents in the Lord, like obey them, obey them, and listen to them. Listen to them and like follow their lead, follow what they want you to do as as if God is talking to you and telling you to do that, right? And you'll see that he's not, you'll we'll see that in the end, St. Paul wants to change the mentality of how we approach things without in a way, because that's not the time to abolish like or change, do those major, major uh, changes. And you'll see that very obvious in the slave, you know, in master's uh, uh, part. So children are to obey their parents in the Lord. Fathers are not to anger their children, which means not to punish them so strictly that they become discouraged. Okay? So that's what you to avoid. That, okay, what good about it if you beat, you know, you beat your child, you know, for whatever they've done? I mean, you, I mean, okay, you might reprimand, you might. Okay, you might hit, you know, behind or something, but like if you beat them and like really like tortured them, what do you, what kind of learning you're doing, right? I mean, there's, if anything, only bad things. But also consider that also the children also are like the property for the, of their parents. So not much like, you know, for the parent has to worry about like, like now, I mean, now if you look, if you look at your child in the wrong way, they might call the police and get you arrested, right? Because you, I don't know, you looked, you know, you know, as if like you kind of something like the kid can pick up the phone, call 911 and bingo, you're gone, you know, just because whatever accusations, right? Um, but, but that doesn't mean that we beat our children, right? Doesn't mean like uh, anything wrong right away. It's like the anger, the hatred, the, Especially this one thing that we always, as parents, maybe fall into is like we punish the kid or we yell at our children because we might feel humiliated or it's a it's a it's a dishonor or like it's a uh, uh, like how, what would people think about us when you you know when you've done this? So it's not more of like caring for the child, like okay, I'm gonna spank him or spank her so they can learn a lesson. Uh, and but it's more of like spanking him or her because now I look as a parent I look bad, and it's a you know so all of these things that we you know we're called to avoid right so fathers are actually to do what, um, uh, but bring them up in training and admonition of the Lord which means nurture their children, the fathers especially fathers must nurture their children. So they can uh, uh, to take care of them, to take care of their children, like the way they take care of their own bodies. The same way I take care of my own body. I don't want any harm to happen to my body. I protect my body. I protect myself. That's how I should approach it. Um, uh, so basically treat my the children with tenderness uh, like we treat our own selves. Fathers need to act like whom? Fathers need to act like the Lord, right? Because he's saying, he's telling the children, well, obey your parents in the Lord. Okay? So to obey you, to, to like deserve that obedience from your child, as a parent, I need to act like the Lord. How did the Lord act? He's just, but he's loving, caring. He doesn't like spite. He doesn't like uh, revenge and all of this. He doesn't do that. Mm. So Dick and Nicola didn't like that either because he likes to beat his children or, or, or he was beaten by his parents. We, one of uh, one of, both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Tell be me. honest with you, discipline without abuse is uh, the Bible speaks of that the userad. 
you know, to discipline your children. Uh, oh. But uh, when it becomes, you know, not not to abuse them, but to discipline them. I, for for instance, when I was uh, young, I was a real troublemaker. So I I Pretty think obvious. Nothing changed, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I think if my dad did not discipline me, I I don't think I would have turned to be who I am today. I think. Uh, hey, but uh, I mean, would you? Did, you know, did you have to go to a hospital? Like, did you have to be um, because of? Uh, I I think one know? time I I think one time it was a little bit excessive, but uh, uh, but is that, is that the norm? Is that not like no you no? But I go back in my memory. I think I'm grateful that he did. Honestly, well, look, I, I, in my heart, I it, it, I believe I'm grateful that he did. If he didn't, in the situation we were uh, living and the life standard. Uh, I would have turned to be um, different than what I am, you know. Well, does it doesn't say like at the end, like I said, God is just. There yeah. are, you know, there are uh, 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 things that we have to deal with, you know, or like he he's just. Uh, he might not like inflict pain, but he allows struggles for us to you know to 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 go through. So and it, it doesn't say like we don't discipline but like discipline in the lord not like i mean i've i know about stories like uh parents uh, what do you call it waterboarding their children that's that what the waterboard like where they just like or uh, you know that's uh cia <laughs> yeah, <military. laughs> right so it's not like well thank god my mom did this so i can come up like you know mm. my mother or my father did this to me thank god <laughs> Now, I, you know, thank God they did this and I deserved it. I, mean, I, there's, I, there's I don't know. I think about it differently, Father. Uh, look at, uh, for instance, if we take Job, okay? The, when the devil presented himself in front of the Lord, he said to him, it's because you have a hedge around him. If you take that hedge, you know, and you see how he will curse you. And God allow him to do whatever he have done with Job, okay. okay? But he told them, do not touch his soul. That's, you cannot uh, touch his soul. You can do anything to his flesh. He took his families away. He took okay. everything okay, and he but, punished but, him. Hey, but that's not I me. Mean, like he's not telling us to do that. He's not telling people to no, do that. No, but he could allow, you know, if he know God is omnipotent and okay. he, you know, if he knows like Nick Saeed is going to be uh, a real bad person in the future, uh, here mm -hmm. I allow his dad to discipline him, uh, to make him a better uh, individual, then... Let, let's, let's leave it I don't know. Let's, I'm, uh, let, let's, uh, <laughs> but we cannot, you know, again, you're going to look at it from a, from a cultural thing that back then they, you could have killed your children and no one cared. It's your child to that kind of extreme. You yeah, but over over here do. we they go to uh you know everybody does something is because he was abused when he was young. Or this is true. I does something because oh sure, but that's the other you know, it's just the other extreme, you exactly. know. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and my view is discipline is needed when you know when it's applied but, properly, then yes. it's but, the parents' but job to do it. Yeah, yeah, but what kind of discipline? Discipline that you beat the uh, not, not to abuse. Yeah. I'm saying to discipline. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And we're not saying he's like he's not okay. saying don't, but you know, like when you like even when yourself like to take care of yourself, you'll have to take measurements of like safety of things like you really want to do, but you can't. So the point is, you still have to do things that might not be comfortable, uncomfortable, with spanking, uh, punishing with some kind of, but like not to like to beat the person. You know, okay, you tell me like, well, growing up, you know, I have PTSD. Anytime I, I hear the word pomegranate or I see anything to do with pomegranate because of the uh, the the branch of pomegranate. It's like the best, it's like the worst probably, you know, but it's not like, you know, for now I can't, you know, my I lost my arm or like my arm is because of the beat up. There's a, you know, um, you know, uh, um, there's a, there's a, 
like a, a, a level, خلاص, you don't cross. But back then, that's what they do. I mean, even till now, we have cultures that they do that to their boys and girls, you know, their, to their children. And so all he said, it's don't reason in a way with the kids. Talk to the kids. Show them by practice, not by, not by I mean, by the way you live, not by the, just like uh, 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 hitting them. Yeah, sometimes you might. But like when you hit, you're not going to like, God forbid, send them to the hospital. Well, I wanted to teach my son a lesson. So I just beat him to really know the pain to the point that like I broke his arm or or I broke his, I don't know, I he's bleeding. Well, hopefully after this bleeding, he learned. Well, well probably you should have used other ways, not just bleed, you know, internal bleeding or whatever that is. Okay, so the point is not always refer right away to this like beat ups, especially that it's a common thing like back then. So... Again, fathers be like the Lord and children obey your parents in the Lord. That's interesting. That's interesting. And like, we can talk more about this, like the obey your children in the Lord, like you obey the Lord. But also, you just have to, like, I can't just, if my parents are like beating me up every day, like really abuse, well, no, it's time for me to leave. It's for like now, yes, not because, well, you know, I'm learning. I'm, I'm like, I'm so bad that I need to learn, you know, so it's okay for them to beat me up. So that's in the first, I'm not denying, of course, we we do not say like, oh, don't hit it. You'll see, you know, you'll hear a lot about like, we can, you know, you should not spank. And if you spank in the back of your hand or whatever they talk about, like, you know, and like, be careful and not this. And like, no, but like, not also on the other extreme, neither extreme. Okay, the second part uh, from five to to uh, uh, to nine, he is basically talking about slavery, right? We hear like he's talking about slavery, which like, nowadays won't even like entertain that kind of talk. But again, that was such a norm thing, right? It's part of the reality of that time and period and culture. Um, what is he saying? What is he saying? He's definitely saying Paul doesn't look, he's telling them, you must free yourself. And it's, you know, somebody from nowadays might say like, wow, like, this is wrong. Why is he not like calling for the abolish, to abolish uh, slavery? But he doesn't. That's not about abolish it or not. It's about what you, how, what you're supposed to do as an individual, regardless in what situation you, you are. Before, like, okay, it is rightful for you to have a be a free man or no, that's of course, but uh, at least what you do, what do you do, uh, what should, how should you act in whatever situation you're in? If you are as a leader, like as here in this case, as a master or as a slave, what you ought to, uh, how you ought to behave. So, slaves, he's actually telling them uh, to, what is it? I said Christ like. Right, uh, right. Slaves are to obey their lords according to the flesh. Right, that's one thing. And uh, bond servants be obedient to those who are your master according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart, as to Christ. Right, as to Christ, not with eye sir eyes uh, eye service as man pleaser pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart with goodwill doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. That's very interesting, right? Uh, it's like, don't like just do your job when everybody when is when somebody's watching you and if your master's not watching you, you don't do your job. Still do your job. Still do what you have to do. Um, it's your part is to do that if you're in that situation, then God will take care of you later. God then will, you know, will deal with your master if he was, um, uh, he was he was a, a bad or whatever, you know, or how, whatever, uh, however he is. Um, so it's it's a uh, again it's it's interesting, uh, because if, if he says abolish, you know, slavery, that probably didn't go well at all, and but that's not the point. Like in the end, it's not like God came to tell us again no one wants to make it like uh, uh, slavery is not a good thing there's no way slavery 
is a good thing in any kind of shape or way. But that was the like that's the mentality two thousand years ago. That's but there's no everybody's equal. No one should be a slave. But in Christ, it, with Christ, with Christianity, it's like what you do with what you with what do you do with where you are with what you have to deal with uh where in what situation you're in what you do right it's a there's a i've said you i've told you this before a patriarch pavlo pa, patriarch paul of serbia um he is not the current patriarch nor the patriarch before uh of serbia two patriarchs back basically uh he has a famous line he says no one chooses where they're born no one chooses the time he or she is born. Uh, the only thing that they can choose, he or she can choose, is how to deal with the situation they're in. So it says, no one chose, you know, to be born in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. you know, or Palestine or Lebanon, or no one chose, you know, to be born, well, I'd like to be born, I'm going to create myself to be born in uh I don't know, in 1960 or in 1880 or in 1260 or in, uh, you know, whatever year, right? But what we have, so we have no control over where we're born and when we're born, right? And who are we born to, right? I mean, who my parents are. I didn't choose my parents, right? But the one thing I have control over is like, what do I do with in, what's in the situation? If I'm born, you know, in, in my case, in Lebanon, in 1981, with parents, you know, my parents, Wasim and Muna. Uh, so all of these situations, the life, all these struggles, how do I, how did I deal with these things? This is what God is now, is is more interested about. So even in a situation that he's saying, even if you're a slave and there was no way for you to somehow uh, free yourself, or but at the end of the day, is how you approach with what you have or where you are. Okay, I do want to read, but it's very interesting. This is like something like, you know, out of the mind of the, you know, of um, people who lived 2000 years ago is about the masters, how they must deal with, with their uh, slaves. Um, so he does say, uh, I'm going to read, uh, Farley has a beautiful explanation about the, how the masters uh, should uh, ought to uh, ought to um, uh, deal with their um, uh, just deal with their servants, but I do want to also read his the one about his the slaves. So the slaves are to obey their lords according to the flesh. Uh, in using this expression for their earthly masters, Saint Paul recognizes that their true master and lord is the Lord in heaven. Uh, Sam, Sammy, we are in chapter 6 of Ephesians. Chapter 6 of Ephesians, we're still in the first part. Verse 1 to verse 9. Okay? Chapter 6, okay. verse 1 uh, to verse 9. Uh, so he's saying, at the end of the day, who's your true master? God is your true master. Christ is your true master. So it is to him that slave that uh, that uh, the slave service is truly directed. So when you're doing the work, whichever work you're doing, if I work for Laurence or I work for Tina or I work for Roxanne or whoever, I'm not like, I need to act as if I'm not just working for Roxanne or Tina or Laurence, but actually I'm working to whom? To the Lord, right? Remember the story I told you about um, the shoemaker? Have you rem Do you remember the shoemaker story? I tell you a lot of stories and I better repeat those stories because they're very good to learn. Do you remember the shoe sto the shoemaker story? Vaguely. I don't. Okay. I, heard, I, I heard vaguely. I heard uh, we don't. It's okay. I still love you all. I will remind you with the story. So it's not like, um, you know, like uh, as someone used to tell a story every time he visited a place without naming names. And even people, when they even knew it very well, he still repeated the story, but I guess now because you don't remember, I'll tell you. Saint Anthony, the story goes that it's Saint Anthony who had that uh, encounter, but um, whoever it can be, whoever. So there's a monk who, while he's praying, he would always say, "God, Jesus, no one loves you the way I love you. No one loves you. I love you the most. I really love you, and I just, you're my only love, and I love you." 
to the point one day, he when he was asleep, he got a vision where Christ comes in and takes him on a journey to the town next next town over from the monastery. And he tells him, I want to show you something. Come. That's in the vision. He takes him to this town and he takes him to a shoemaker a store. And he tells Christ tells the monk, they say all St. Anthony's. It could be whoever. Maybe St. Anthony, maybe whoever. But that's not because that's not the point of the story. It's like he tell the Christ tell the monk tells the monk, see this shoemaker? And he's like, okay. He's like, he works most of the days because he's poor and he barely gets time to sleep or to pray or to do whatever. Take care of his family because he needs to provide for his family. Guess what? He loves me. He loves Christ more than you. And he's like, what? He's a shoemaker. He's making uh, shoes and fixing shoes. How is he? Like, look how many hours I, I, you know, I pray and I, I, frustrations and all of this to show my love to you, Christ. He's like, yes, fine. I pray. No, no, no problem with that. But guess what? Each person that this shoemaker fixes or makes a shoe for, he considers them as if they are me. Uh, uh, the shoe is for me. Me referring to whom? To Christ. As if like Christ showed up at the store, you know, doorstep of the shoemaker and told him, hey, I have a problem with my shoe. Can you fix it? Or I'm in need of new shoes. Do you have new shoes? Have you made, can you make new shoes to my, you know, uh, to me? So he was not working for his customers. Who was he working for? He considers that he was working for Christ. And that's how he shows his love to Christ. That he, you know, not just because it's Laurent's like, hey. I'll just fix it. I'll just do whatever. It's Laurence. You know what I mean? But then, oh my gosh, if the governor comes in or like the president comes to my store and like, oh my gosh. And, um, you know, he wants me to do something. Oh, I have to take care of it. It's the president. It's the governor. It's the prince. It's the emperor. It's, you know. So he's saying that this guy never had any, treated everybody the same. Not a way in the same, not as the same as if like whatever. It's not just the, the same but also as if they're all Jesus Christ. Okay? And that's what he's basically calling here, telling the slaves. That yes, you might be enslaved, but at the end, and you're working, you know, but like consider it at least you're working for Christ. So do things the best you can with a pure heart. Do, and then, you know, and that's what God appreciates. He's not going to save you just because you're a free, because a free and slaves in the eyes of God is the same. It's what you do when you were free. It's what you do when you were a slave. How did you conduct your life? Okay? So, uh, they are to serve, they, the slaves, are to serve and work with fear and trembling, an expression denoting not cring cringing um, uh, servili servility and, art and terror, but profound humility. Profound humility. Um St. Paul says that he himself was with the church. Da, 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 da. We don't need this. They can take comfort. The slaves can take comfort in knowing that their service is not simply a misfortune imposed by circumstances. That's interesting. Um, uh, uh, as if like, well, that's it is the will of God. Um, that is, it is how they will work out their salvation and please Christ whose slaves they actually are. As we all say, we're always, what do we say for, literally, we're still in our, all in our hymnography and all of this. We don't say we are just khidam. We are servants. We're what? We're abid. We're slaves. You know? In English, always, like I said, our hymnography, like the hymns we, it's like kind of like, eh, just the slaves are like, it's probably too harsh, it's not, but it's like, yes, we are slaves because we owe everything to God. The good thing is God is this perfect master. That he still, even when I'm his slave, he still makes considers considers me as a son, as an heir, as a, a, a as like part of his flesh, part of his body. Okay. So uh that is uh, that is it is how they will work out their salvation and please Christ, 
whose slaves they actually are. Their task, though received by their earthly master, are actually an offering to Christ, and whatever good thing they do will receive its commensurate reward from him, from Christ. Thus, they should not work with mere eye service as men pleasers. That is, they should not only work when they are watched and may be rewarded. They should work hard always for their true master, the Lord Jesus. Always seize them and there will be true and final recompense um, for, for, from him, from Christ. This apply to all, whether slave or free, even to their masters. And then he continues to talk about the lords, the masters. Their lords, the masters, should do the same to them. Here is an amazing teaching and one without true parallel in the pagan world. Nothing in this world back then has anything uh, close to what Christianity, uh, what St. Paul is writing. Do the same things to them, giving them, uh, giving up, threatening, knowing that your own master also is in, he is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. There is no talks. You know, back then, you own a slave, you own a slave. That's your, he's your slave. Do what that, whatever you want. As if, like, not a human being. As if not, but not only, not, we, you know, we we treat dogs now a trillion times better than how slaves were treated back then. Okay? Uh, so imagine that kind of talk. So there is no a uh, true parallel in the pagan world of what St. Paul is saying. For the pagans, there was a basic difference a difference between slaves and lords and no true equality between them. Slaves were but living tools. Just literally, you're like a, a screwdriver. You know, or you're a chair. What happens if the chair breaks? What do you do usually with it? You burn it. You get rid of it, right? Well, guess what happened if the slave is... Uh, um, you know, is I don't know, sick is I don't know that you know, you just got in an accident. What do you do? You know, get rid of it. That's why, by the way, just a just a entre guillemets, as we say in French, uh, between parentheses, uh, not actually between parentheses, between quotation. Uh, um, there is the, the story of Christ saving or healing the the soldier, the servant of the centurion remember that story and he tells him just say a word god just say a word christ and he'll you don't even have to go to uh, to my house just say a word and hopefully he'll uh, um he'll he'll uh, uh, uh he'll be healed this centurion could have said this is a slave or whatever even if he's a shoulder or a soldier or not like okay he's useless now guess what get rid of him get rid of him and no no government is going to tell him wrong. No society is going to tell him wrong. Not even himself is going to have any kind of like remorse or like, oh, what did I do? You know, because that's the norm. But what did the centurion do? What did he do? He took care of his life. And that's the that's why this this our gospel reading and this gospel event, uh, they, uh, you know, it's mentioned because the gravity of like how the master uh, 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 dealt with one of his slaves, where the slave was sick, was useless. He still took care of him. Okay. Uh, have you have you watched uh, or do you have you seen the the chosen? The chosen is uh it's like a it's like a, a series about uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's like I think like fourth season now, fourth season or something. Yeah. They focus on some of the uh, some of the events of Christ and Christ love, uh, Christ life. It's uh, it's good, like to see in a way they focus a lot on his humanity, as if like this this human a, a person, but they don't put much of like, uh, uh, of his divinity. Like they didn't do Lazarus. They didn't put in his in those four seasons. Now they never talked about transfiguration anything. But the way I bring it to you. It's actually it's 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 uh, they have their own app. I think it's also now and on uh, Amazon Prime, the chosen. It's it's good to watch it, but you you watch it with uh, what's the word like with caution. Really? Yeah, because it's good that you see because a lot of times we focus a lot or we put a lot of focus on Christ, 
uh, divinity and we forgot he was a human. So this one is just like a reminder that also Christ was a full man. So, I mean, they, that's, but they, they, I mean, one of the scenes like Christ is walking in the field and his disciples next to him, but you would feel, I don't you would think like, I don't know, some kind of a, I don't know, something like, I don't know how to explain this. It's like the music and stuff. You'll be like just a cool guy, cool, good guy walking down the, the field or something. <clears throat> a lot of things like, hey, okay. like And why the reason I'm, I'm, um, I'm saying this, it's because they, in one of the episodes in those four seasons, they have an episode in, the, in that episode, they show this, like the, the scene, uh, the centurion uh, 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 asking Christ to save his slave uh, dying. But what did they do? This is where like there's no Christian, fat, like there's no manuscripts about this to confirm it. There's no anything to confirm it. And it takes actually... It, it takes really the meaning and the purpose of that story in the gospel, where basically they in that show, they claim uh, that the slave actually, it's his son from, from uh, uh, like, a, 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 maybe, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that word, uh, like basically it's his bastard son, so that he had... A relationship with his mother who was so the centurion had a relationship out of wedlock with his mother uh the slave and gave birth to that son so he, although he's a slave because he cannot claim him to be his son and that's why he doesn't want to, he doesn't want him to die because it's his son but we don't have any kind of information like that they literally made that up you know? So then this is, sounds like something right. that can actually confuse Christians if they watch this. Then they confuse yes. them. Absolutely. And they're going, wait a minute, where is that? Absolutely. I remember Absolutely. that. And, you know. Absolutely. That's why a lot of times, unfortunately, pe people want to rely on whatever on TV and whatever movies and whatever things, but like just read the, read the, you know what I mean? Just read this, read it, read, read the, you know. You know, read this. Just read the the scriptures. Trust what the church tells you. That's it. Actually, there's um. They were asked the producers of uh, um, uh, of that show. Uh, they uh, they were asked one question that actually you'll see it online here and there uh, if you watch it. Um, it says, "Hey, you skipped. Somebody's asking. Somebody's telling them like you skipped uh, transfer uh, uh, transfiguration." The event of transfiguration and the response of the producers like what what is that going to help us with our story like why do we need to show this event you know what i mean plus and they it, say that it's based on and when they use that term based on it's got facts but it's not all true and but people don't always know that either well, they see it and they be like, "Oh, that's that's just this yeah. is now I know about Chris, uh, Christ, and Christians, uh, based on what you know, uh, um, um, based on that. You know what I mean? So anyway, again, let's go back so we don't. But we opened up one thing, to, you know, led to. So he's talking about masters, how they ought to behave, right, and what how they must behave with their uh, slaves, with their employees, with their people who work for them. Um, they must leave off, they, as ma the masters, leave off threatening them, threatening their, uh, their servants. A form of lordly behavior taken for granted in the ancient pagan world. Slaves, in fact, must be treated, as St. Paul is saying, as brethren. There is to be a kind of basic equality between lord and slave notwithstanding their highly unequal social relation. This underlying equality is based on the fact that both the free and the slave, the master and the slave, have the same master who is Christ, God, right? So the Lord Christ who is in the heavens, there is no respect of persons with him. Christ is not going to be like, oh, you're so-and-so. I must treat you differently because, oh, because of your whatever position. Christ does not know these things. 
lordly cruelty will be avenged and lordly kindness rewarded. Thus, all relationships or well, all relations are to be brought under the transforming power of gospel. Wives and husbands, children and parents, even slaves and masters, all the relationships of our life are to be a part of our service to whom? To Jesus Christ, to Christ the Lord. Some people say, but I'm in a situation, I cannot leave, but this person is, does not, we hear it a lot. This person is not acting as a Christian. Okay, what do you do? You act like him? Right? There's a, also a story about a woman who kept visiting every, every, every single day. Actually, we live it. That's why, you know, it's a, we know the story, but we also see it with, with Tina. You know? And this woman uh, goes to the hospital every day because her husband has, to check on her husband, he has Alzheimer's. Can't even remember anything. Nothing whatsoever. Doesn't even recognize himself. Doesn't recognize his wife or anybody. And at some point every day, she'll go and visit. She'll go and visit and spend time with him. He has no idea who she is. No idea whatsoever. Okay? And then they told her, so the doctors one day said, why are you doing this? He doesn't know who you are. You know what her response was? Yeah, I know who he is. But she said, but I know who he is to me. Mm -hmm. So in a way, she's still honored and she still recognize, recognizes what her duty is, what her job is, what her responsibility is, and what her uh, duty for God, for Christ to do. And we see that now. Even like, look what's happening in the Middle East or before Steen. And it's like somehow, well, they started, they killed. Like, oh, they, they started it. Okay, how are you acting different than them now? So what, you know, so if they killed, you kill back. Not to justify the killing, be, you know, which, okay, it has its reason for sure. And all, you know, but the point is, always remember who we are before we say, well, he is not this or she did this or he did that. Okay, if they forgot for whatever reason, they forgot their Christianity, you know, in this encounter with you, but that doesn't mean you forget it. Or somehow now it's an excuse for me now. Yeah, well, he, I don't know, disrespected me. The least I can do is what? Disrespect him. Or he hurt me. The least what I can do is what? Which hurt back. Well, but that doesn't work this way. It's hard. It's almost sometimes you feel it's impossible, but it's that's what it is. That's what it, Christianity is. That's what St. Paul is telling us. Comments, complaints, questions. Zabia, she opened the camera. If Zabia opened the camera, that means there's something coming down the toddler. No? She's home now. Oh, she's home, unless you're home. With the, with the, um, with the story of the son, the lost son. Which one, the last son? Jesus, the Jesus, the missing son. When the two father, the father has two two sons. Prodigal and, son. Yeah, prodigal son, prodigal son. Yeah, and let me shelter, let me shelter, right? So we see, like Jesus told the story. Yes. yes. Uh, the parable. Yes, exactly. Yes. But in this in this parable like he he taught us different what paul saying here like we have we have to instruct and we have to train with the lord word but with jesus mm -hmm. like con contradicting with this with this what paul was saying oh what do you mean <sighs> Like uh, when he when the son re returned, he was praised and he was the there was a party and they they killed the the fat uh, ball for him and all that. Yes. So like, I don't know. I find it. I find it. It's not. There is no discipline whatsoever here. He didn't learn anything. I, see, I, see. I mean, I see what you're saying. Yes, and there is a point. There is, but always we have to talk again that's why it's important there's that's why we always say there's no way you can tell all the story in one like like there's always 
you, there's always a time that you I mean it's like you have to focus like if I have a paper to to write uh, or to present or to there's no way I can write about everything in the hour that I'm given or two hours that I'm I'm uh, I'm given you know at that conference or anything so the point is what is the lesson there is a specific lesson this one lesson that God wants to bring to our attention that does not mean that it's going to be the rule for everything. It just in in uh, um, um, uh, um, um, it's like in a way, it's not about like yes, he need to be but like oh, why wasn't he punished? And that's actually the reaction of the older brother, right? The older brother when he heard about his father, honor you know welcoming right. back his son and giving him like you said. Killing the fat, you know, the, the the fat bull and the 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 fat calf and and giving him the, uh, the 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 ring and putting the you know the the cloth the uh, uh, yeah the cloth uh, the the uh, basically rope. The, the, rope. the rope exactly the rope thank you really rope. and it's like whoa 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 the guy just spent all your money and not only this he considered you dead he considered you dead but it's not about it's not just like here like oh then. Oh, just you know, do all act the, like this all the time. This Christ here is basically just to teach us this one lesson is about forgiveness, giving somebody another chance. Not like another chance where like, yeah, let do whatever the hell you want to do. No, it's just like, but don't act just because one person or what somebody made one mistake. All of a sudden, that's it. You put an X. We we do that. We 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 act that a lot, right? It's like even after twenty years, he's the guy who did this. She's the one who did this, right? And what was around that? I don't know if it's before it or right after it. What did Paul uh, 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 Peter ask Christ? Uh, he told him, "How many times should I uh, um, uh, uh, should I forgive my brother? Seven times, as the law says." And what did Christ answer him? He told them, seven thousand, seven million, seven whatever. Seven seventy times. Four hundred and ninety times. Yeah. But is that the is that the thing? Is is it because it's four ninety, or no? Or is it the point is forgive them? Infinite. That does it mean like I can forgive you? I mean, I hope. Let's say I don't know. I'm like Zabia. I did, like I don't know. I'm I have something that I struggle with, okay? And then I come to my my wife, my mother, whatever, my father, whoever, and I say, I did this. I mean, I hope my parents forgive me or help me overcome whatever struggle, you know, I'm doing. That doesn't mean if I come and tell them I'm addicted to alcohol. Um, so it's like, oh, yeah, you know what? You are not our son anymore. You're a disgrace. Let's, you know, we don't want you here. You deal with it. The heck with you. Although I made, you know, I made the mistake. I don't know. I was on the street for like three, four days, drunk, not knowing, you know, where I am, what I'm doing. People already knew that, oh, look, this guy is, is a drunk. But my, as a parent or as my spouse, or who, the, the, what you're supposed to do is they help me. They give me another chance. But that doesn't mean whatsoever that I should not go to rehab, force me to go to rehab, force me literally hide, don't give me money. If I ask for money, they shouldn't give me the money because I might fall into it. So it's not like forgiving in a way to allow me, or well, in case if they forgive me or gave me another chance, that means they're going to let me or they should, they should let me do, you know, go, you know, help me with my, like, help me go back to my struggle. You know what I mean? So, there still should be discipline, but the discipline is like, yeah, you're not going to have your own money because every time you have money, you're going and you're ending up at the liquor store, you know, buying whatever, beer, alcohol, whatever it is. So guess what? We forgive you, but we're going to be very stingy with you that you're not allowed to go by yourself out. You're not allowed to because, or we want you to go to rehab. And if you don't go to rehab, there's another problem, you know, we'll have to deal with this. Um, but it's not like here Christ is saying, oh, it doesn't, like, yeah, forgive him and make sure, you know, forgive, you know, Father John and, 
give make sure you bring the three bottles of uh, vodka you know make sure they're ready always in his room to drink because oh well you love him and you should give him another chance and it's like l showing your love you know what i mean like sh that's how you show your love by letting him do whatever you want and just forget what all mistakes yeah yeah he was drinking before that's okay let him keep drinking and your job is to forgive no to forgive in discipline with you know so i think that's i hope that exp explains uh so it's not like um, again, it's whatever the situation that Christ but, or Paul is have to deal with. You know what I mean? Uh, Father, in this parable, that's mean like if the if the same son went again and he spent the money of his father again, it will be another chance if we want to forgive seven seven hundred seventy seven. That's but but the guy already learned his lesson he was yeah. working it, it cleaning under, under, and himself. he was hungry and if you remember the father said your your brother was dead and now he's alive he was yeah. lost and now he is found so he was trying to give us an example how god will receive us at no matter what we have done if we repent and we come back God was, will be with an open uh, hands, welcoming us to come back. Yeah. And the heavens will rejoice with one sinner coming back. That's one point. The second point is the he was remorseful. He, uh, he when he came back, he was sorry for what he did. He said, "Even the slaves, uh, they're eating at my dad's uh, table." Yes, you know, miss, I, miss. yes, yes. Because I do want to continue with that part. But you're absolutely right. And he did say, "I came back to my." You know, he came back to himself. He's like, right. "What do I do? What yeah. am I doing?" It's not like coming back just to take advantage. It is hard. So you give them a chance. That's why you give them another chance. Um, would I give all the money again? Maybe not. But he wants to go and do his own thing. Then okay, you know that know that you have a. I tell I tell people, especially like in, in relation, like in um, um, uh, uh, we had a situation a few years ago, um, and uh, uh, there was a problem with with the child, and um, the parents were very upset to the point like they were doing. I mean, they're not making the situation better. And I told them like, well, don't you want this guy at least, at least to one day he realizes that he did something wrong. At least to know he has a house he can go back to. He has people might, you know, go back to. How would he come back to you? At least, you know, yes, be firm, do all of this. But like, if you're not there somehow to nourish him or like be there for him, you're going to make it. If there's a chance he might be better, that's not going to be. Because at least... Like the prodigal son and say, what did I do? But let me go back because my father is good. My father was there for me. He, you know, my father, my mother, whoever. Okay. So good discussions about like forgiveness, what kind of forgiveness, how we forgive and, you know, but we still have to forgive. Okay. Uh, Sammy. I have yes. a question. I'm still not sure what the contradiction is when, with her point. Yeah. Well, Xavier's point. What is, what is the contradiction? If I understood uh, Zabia, like it seems with the parable that you're just a lot with the parable of the prodigal son, you're just uh, allowing, you know, you just forgive. So that's why she said, well, there's no uh, uh, small discipline. Paul, Paul basically is urging, like, treat your child, I mean, discipline, but discipline in the Lord. Like, point out, and actually, a couple. Uh, um, a couple uh, uh, chapters. I don't know if it was chapter five or chapter four. He does say, like, expose your, uh, you know, the person who does wrong. Like, just go tell them you did wrong and tell people about him. Like, you did wrong and you need to stop. So that's the uh, according to Zabia, she sees a contradiction between of like allow like Christ forgiving. Uh, 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 I mean, in the parable of the prodigal son. Well, I guess there's no repercussion. There's no, not kind of like any kind of a punishment, anything just like this. He just walks in and that's it. Well, how about if he does it the next month? Goes back and say, hey, you know what? I'm leaving again. Give me some money and I want to leave. So it's like, just like that. And we're saying, no, you still have to forgive, but you like, you have to be just. You have to uh, like forgive, but in a good, like, 
forgive with like things that you have to do, not like just forgive and let them do whatever they want or help them nourish what they have, what they're struggling with. Anyway. I thought she meant there's a contradiction between prodigal son and chapter six we're discussing. I, it's just a, I didn't see it. Like when when uh, Paul said, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up with training and instruction of the Lord. Huh. But the father, when his son returned, he didn't do any of this. Well, we never know. Because Christ spoke, wanted to point, you know, again, that's why it's important. We need to know what is the, the goal of that story. Okay. Because in one place, like we saw with St. Paul, he, in Romans, he tells us it's all about what? It's all about the faith, about the faith, the faith, the faith, the faith. And then you'd be like, oh my gosh, that's why you have all of these like Protestant. So why do I need to go to church? Why do I need it? You know, it's like, it's all about, I believe in Christ. It's like, no, but he wanted to make that point to the Romans who basically doing all these good things, but they're forgetting that actually to have the right mind to approach it. That's why in other places, like in Ephesians 8 or in Galatians, he's telling them work, 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 because they're just like taking things for granted. Oh, I believe, what do I do? So it's not like Paul contradicting himself. It's just he's speaking about that point that it's important for that audience that he's addressing. I, I think the um, what was said is honor thy mother and thy father. Mm -hmm. it's it's a conditional honor you have to be good to them too it's not just automatically get honored if you're an abusive parent you know you haven't earned that honor that's what uh, this whole thing is all about is uh, sons honor your, uh, your mother and your, and your father but at the same time the condition is your father and the mother have to love you back or don't make it don't don't bring them to anger it's not an automatic uh not automatically earned. That's my understanding. It's the same thing when, when with marriage. Uh, the, 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 the husband uh, is the head of the house, but there's a condition. You have to love your wife uh, more than your life. These, yeah, are, but... these are conditions. They come two, three sentences later or one word, two words later. Yeah, but Sammy, again, and I'm sorry because I have a, a meeting at 8.45. That's why I want to, uh, but but the point is, again, as Deacon Nicola, as Sammy, you know, mentioned um, uh, what's important, we need to know the ambience, the concept, the ambience, the, the, like the, the ambience, like what's happening and why is he focusing on one thing that it might look that it's contradicting other. It just that he had to focus on these uh, on these things, depending on the situation. Christ wanted to make a point that you do not right away X the person. We do that. We do that, you know, right? We do that big time in our culture too. It's like I've talked to people in my own family. They don't talk to each other because, I don't know, 25 years ago, somebody did something. Like, okay, it was wrong. No one no one is denying this. Like, no chances whatsoever. You know? Life ended. Hello. There's no reason. There's no way of like any kind of reconciliation. Nothing. Nothing. Hello. Just one mistake. Ooh. And that's that's at least in the in the prodigal son, uh, um, in the prodigal son parable. God wanted to make sure that like, show some mercy, show some, uh, you know, uh, uh, forgiveness, like you expect from God. It's interesting. Like we all, uh, you know, we do that. Or, you know, we do that. We just like ask someone because. Whatever he said, she said, or she did. And sometimes, I mean, most of the time, it's really they hurt. But then we go in every other day, forgive me, God, I did this wrong. Forgive me, God. Okay, how do you expect God to forgive us? And I'm, if I'm asking God to forgive us every time I make some mistake when I did the, this wrong multiple times. Why would God want to forgive me? And I'm not able to. And again, it's hard sometimes because people hurt, maybe, really hurt me, really caused pain, really like inflicted, you know, bad things on me. And it's not like a switch of a button. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah, fine, I'll forgive them because, you know, no. But like, what do I do to like go back, try to fix that? Because if I'm expecting God to give me another chance, well, the least I can do is give that person another chance. In a way, not like, oh yeah, he used to abuse me or whatever, or she used to abuse me. And then like, yeah, let's go back and let them abuse me. So, no, then you put 
of course precautions you put like um uh, 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 like you'll have to know how to deal with it but you might have to give them i mean you will we expect it to give them other chances or forgive at least you know so the next part and we can talk about this actually we can have actually a whole that's why uh, nicolette if she can hear us that's why probably for the lenten retreat that's probably what i want to do um if we will get it's probably speaker but like if if either we'll work it out but i do want to work i do want to uh the topic will be forgiveness and humility humility and forgiveness and based on the movie um the ostrov the island i think that's my rampage like i want to play the movie it will be a day playing the movie ostrov watching it and then make it because it's it's a great example of forgiveness given it another chance and a humility beautiful movie even if you get to see it i've seen it multiple times it's like those like uh, i don't know home alone movie at least for me that every year or elf you watch it but it's like you don't it's you don't get bored ostrov the island it's uh, about a russian a russian monk mm. Beautiful movie. Beautiful. You might cry. If you don't cry or you don't like you know, hold it a little bit here, there's something that we have to talk about, like how like about your life. But uh the very nice too. Zabi, I didn't hear you. What do you say? I said the chanting in the movie is very nice too. Yes, it's the Russian. Yeah, so you've seen it, Zabi, you've seen Ostrov. How did you feel about it? Was it like me? Bad movie? We'll talk more about this. It's a beautiful. The example of the shoe is is great. You know when he burned the shoes. I yeah burned the shoes, burned the whole thing. <laughs> burned the mattress. Yes, burned the mattress. Yes. But, but, but yes. Just, you know, uh, I, I think if just put Ostrov. I don't know if there's an e, but you can. But just put next to it mm -hmm. uh, the, the island. island because I guess Ostrov means island in uh, Russian. Russian. Yeah. Funny. It's okay. like an old movie, 1980, I believe, something like that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, something like this. Um, the next part, the second part. Who would like to read uh, uh, verse 10 to verse 20? Anybody? Any? If there is no. I can read it. Okay, go no, ahead. Ten to twenty. Okay, spiritual warfare. Finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of, his age, of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the sword, which is the word of god praying always with the prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to, the, to, the, to this end with all reverence and supplications for all the saints perseverance i'm sorry and for me that utter utterance may be given to me that i may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak thank you thank you uh thank you um interesting what is he saying here now so now it's not anymore about my relationship father, father there is another piece to it in the in the back which is called yeah. and benediction no, I, I knew that, but but this oh, is like, oh, know, like my apologies. Thank you. No, thank you for bringing it up. But the the I just it's a, the, the other the, the last part is basically uh, uh, like the, the you know the uh, greetings and you know thanking them and all of this. 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. Oh, no, go back to your bed and then go to bed. I'll deal with it later. Yep. Um, Matthew, of course, like there's always one sleeping. It's like, but there's this thing we have to take care of before we go to sleep and we have to do this and this. Anyway, so in this part now, we're not talking anymore how to deal with others is what to deal to do to to, to deal with whom ourselves our spirit ourselves right and what does he give human being like what kind of um, a description we should be like uh, what kind of description he uses to like to work on ourselves like what what how should we how should we be. protect how we should we like carry the weapons uh -huh, uh -huh. so what are what is this thing we are a soldiers of truth well we're, basically he's he's telling us to look or what to do with ourselves and how to deal with ourselves like a soldier going to war right what do you need to protect yourself or what you need to have when you go to war well first of all your wardrobe has to be in a way not in your way right i mean it has to be tucked in there's a belt so you can run you can you know right you need an armor like right? you need uh, uh, an armor right you know to protect your chest and your back right what else do you need you need a sword to fight with right and what else you need a helmet you need a helmet not only this you need shoes you know what i mean like if you're in a in a battlefield so you need all of these things so what is saint paul does here what does he do he basically takes every good i mean very uh, he takes every necessary element in wars of a soldier should have and gives it what a christian name in a way right so what does he say well you must have uh, um, uh, um, the truth right so what is the truth uh, first of all, let me finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, with the armor that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, for we do not wrestle against, right? And this is beautiful. First of all, before I go through those uh, spiritual readiness, um, who do we fight when we're fighting? You know, at the end, he's saying we're fighting the devils, the demons, right? The demons, the, uh, those demons that we have inside of us, the hatred, the anger, all of this. So, at the, in the end of the day, we're saying that we have to. We cannot fight those things thinking on our own. No, we must. Uh, we must fight by putting the armor of God. And what is the armor of God? Is what kind of what you know? What kind of a helmet? What kind of a belt? What kind of a sword? What kind of a uh, um, uh, an armor here? What kind of shoes? Or else we won't be able to defeat the devil we can never ever defeat the devil on our own and that's a perfect you know lesson for us because in the church we that's why we are in need of a spiritual father that's why we are in need of friends and community to help us um fight this because if i say well i'm on my own i can defeat you know have you ever heard of someone i mean how rare for someone who has any kind of addiction to beat it just on his own or on her own it's very rare what do it usually takes? It takes uh, you know, support and help from others, right? But the point here in the in our struggles that we need to make sure that we have God with you know in us, that uh, uh, only when empowered by the Lord that we can stand against the devil, for we are not wrestling against humans but demons, right? To fight the devil, I don't know. Like we say, we as Christians, we're like soldiers, right? Fighting the evil. So to to fight the devil, we must put on the armor of God. What is the armor? The armor of God, the truth, the truth of the gospel about who Christ is. Okay, speaking the truth, righteousness. Yes. We are righteous, right? Roxanne, yes. what did you say? Peace. No, I'm I'm listening as well. I'm sorry, Father. No, no problem. No problem, no problem. So righteousness to acquire peace, right? Right to acquire peace. To have faith, right? That we have hope and trust in God. We have to have the faith. We have to have the salvation, right? Believe in salvation that we know at the end of the day. The the, the result, uh, um, the result of this war 
if we win it is being saved, being with God, and then we must, uh, um, we must acquire what the Word of God. In what way? Basically, saying that you would never ever should fight to force people to become Christian. Although the church fell into this, the Catholic Church made you know many mistakes like fighting, like let's take the sword, you know, sword and start killing people in the name of Christianity. Okay, so uh, so in order to have the armor of God, uh, which that's the I think that's the helmet. I think at the end, the helmet is what um, the helmet is prayerful life. You can never have faith nor except expect salvation or um you cannot uh, um you know acquire you know righteousness be peaceful without conducting a prayerful life prayerful life like you pray you know you you pray you, you offer like you, you know you talk to god you you know you take that time to sit down and read the, the uh at least in our days now in our time that we read the, God, the, the the scriptures, that we go to church, we pray, we read about the scriptures and all of this. Uh, and if we don't have that, it's a problem. You know, we cannot, it will be a losing battle with the devil because we can never and cannot beat the devil on our own without Christ, without acquiring this prayerful life, the truth, the salvation and, and faith and trust and all of this with God. So that's what he's basically speaking in this second part from verse uh, 10 to verse 20. And then, of course, he says, uh, look at 19. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly. So, yes. Yes, talk about, you know, do all of this for yourself, but also in your, while you're putting the armor of Christ, of God, while you're preparing yourself to fight the devil, don't forget about me. Pray for me. Why? Because what is he, where is he writing this? Um, where was he? Where was he? Yeah, where was he when he was writing this? He was was in prison, right? And he was waiting his uh, his trial. So even with this, even like knowing that he's going to die, but he has to still present his case to uh, to to Pilate uh, to Caesar. Um, his goal is what to preach Christ in front of Caesar. So he's saying, "Pray for me that God strengthen me. God gives me the power and the wisdom." to write like to speak up the truth to speak um you know to speak uh uh, uh, uh to preach uh, uh to preach christ to caesar knowing that at the end even if i'm gonna die and he's willing to do that he's willing to die but as and he, and he mentions right for which i am an uh, i am an ambassador he's an ambassador of whom of christ right but in what in chains so even like i don't care about my chains I don't care what's going to happen to me. My goal and my role in life is to preach Christ. And that's what I'm going to do, even to the last breath. Okay. That in it, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. I want to speak boldly about my faith, regardless what, whatever the struggles and all of this, I, um, uh, whatever punishment, even if I have to lose my life. And uh, the last uh, two verses, anybody? I read it, Father. Yeah, thank you. So that you also may have news from 21, right, Father? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, yes, please. That you also may have news of me and what I am doing. Tychiochus, if I'm reading it right, my beloved brother and trustworthy minister in the Lord will, will tell you everything. I am sending him to you for this very purpose so that you may know about us and that he may encourage your hearts. Be the brother, brothers, and love with faith from God, the Father, and, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all, all who love our Lord Jesus Christ in immorality. Thank you. Thank you. So as he's basically finishing the letter, right? And then he's sending them. It seems like a tichikos 
Tejikos probably, that's what his name. Um, Tejikos is, uh, um, he's the one probably either he's going to deliver the letter for them, um, you know, and, and uh, um, you know, uh, and tell them the concerns and all of the, that, what we've read. So in this epistle, as we put an ending, it's an end to it. Um, it's very important, this big, big, big lesson that we can, if anything we want to take, from the epistle of Saint, of uh, uh, of Saint Paul to the Ephesians, is that we must be reconciled with two things: one, we reconcile with God, and then the second one is we reconcile with whom, with others. Our faith is all about our relationship with God and our relationship with the other. They complete each other. I cannot say I have a relationship with God, but I have no relationship with people. Right. And I cannot say I have a relationship with people, but I don't worry about my relationship with God. All of these, both of them are important. That's why, what did we say about the, the cross, what, the shape of the cross? What can we learn from the shape of the cross? That the long bar, long bar is what is our relationship between with God and us, right? And the small and the vertical, uh, the uh, horizontal bar is what? Relationship with each other. With each other, exactly, right? And both, they get united in whom? Who's in the middle, usually, of the cross? What do we usually have? In the only one. Right? The head of Christ. Right? So it, it's, we're united through Christ with this. And that's the, um, that's, oh, I'll deal with them in a minute. Um, um, so that's, uh, that's what we, um, that's where we, we're, we're, we're expected to do. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes a lot of work. It takes forgiveness. It takes all of this, but I'm like, I mean, I don't say unfortunately, but it's not because it's not unfortunate, but it's actually, that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, the, the cross existed before Jesus Christ was uh, crucified. Yes, but like we gave it that meaning, right? In Christ, we baptized it. Like, yes, it was, I always say that it's the most humiliating way of dying, right? right? It's the most humiliating way of dying. And then what the Christ baptized it, he actually, what in what way changed, the whole world changed its perspective on the cross. Oh, okay, what, because that was my question. And if the, the cross existed before, and then Absolutely. We, have, we came up with the explanation that the length yeah. is... The, with Christ, we changed our way of looking at the cross. Before Christ, we look at the cross and say, oh, look how humiliating thing this guy, like what kind of a humiliating death. But with Christ, it became like, no, um, like um, uh, um, uh, with Christ, um, with Christ, it's like, no, like now it became a sign of, it, that's why of pride you know we as christians we're never supposed to say i'm proud of what i've done i did this i'm proud the I only like time uh, the only time the word pride is used you know for what cross saint paul says i am proud with cross so i'm proud of being humble of the humility of sacrifice dying for the other that's the only time i should say i'm proud i'm proud when like i sacrifice myself you know, for others, you know, for others. that doesn't mean like I don't take care of myself, but uh, but that's what we well, that what's that's what we must do. Anyway, we have kids running around, and like, you know, it's just like sometimes you know. So like you're telling me like how to deal with kids and stuff. I'm not gonna just like keep telling them like yeah, it's fine. After I'm done with here, he's gonna be spanked a couple times. Now it's on record, you know. If if somebody wants to call child service, child services or something, he's gonna be spanked. But like he's not gonna be like, God forbid, bleeding or something. God forbid. But he's gonna be like, like learned it, you know. And every once in a while, they need that reminder. Okay, that's a very applicable way of our lesson today. You know, how good, you know, at random. Well, um. I do need to get on a, uh, uh, thank you, Deacon. I do need to get on a, a call at 845, but it's actually, it's on the same Zoom. Uh, it's this, on the same uh, uh, link. But let's do the prayers and then we, uh, okay. Any questions, any comments, any, thank you for all joining us, of course, like always. Thank you for joining us. And, thank uh, you, Father. And we do then, but also next week, like I said, we're not going to meet because it's Thanksgiving. 
unless you really insist, then we'll find you know. Okay. <laughs> Thanksgiving, enjoy your day of Thanksgiving, um, and then next in the next week we'll probably keep it going. I still have I didn't get a chance to sit down and figure out December calendar, mm -hmm. but in, usually November and December we have multiple services going. So let me in the next week we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, we you know we either take a break for the month of December, or we um, we can do it depending on what we have to offer in December, on Thursdays and stuff. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. In the thank name you, of the Lord. Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessing you bestow upon us. We ask you to keep us all healthy and safe, and keep our families healthy and safe. We ask you to enlighten our minds so we can acquire your love and your sacrifice and your wisdom and your forgiveness. So we so we live by your words and we live like you taught us. Amen. Amen. Uh, happy